Okay, welcome everyone for another live Q&A video. Uh, today we are talking about chapter 4 that it took place in on the Pyrenees. And first of all, thanks everyone for, for joining on, on Instagram. All your comments will be on the video that we will be posting on YouTube in the next couple of, of days. And we're going to talk today about some lessons learned on chapter 4. Also, we're going to be giving away the giveaway from the previous chapter, which was a sour knife. And we will be announcing the next giveaway that I'll, I'll talk about it in, in a bit. And also, we will be answering some of the questions that you guys have been sending us through social media and also on the comments on, on YouTube. So, chapter four took place on the Pyrenees. That's the northern part of Spain on on the border with with France it's a beautiful area and the reason we included it in in the stack culture is because it's the hand that we hunt all together with my friends and that's a very important part of the stack culture thing is to to share it with friends and and with family no so we definitely it was a must stop for the for season one and for the project and and despite it was a long drive that it took us like 10 hours to make it there uh, we we had to we had to include it it's true that we were missing a couple of friends this year because of the covid restrictions and one of them was fernando which you will see you, you have seen him on on the series because he lives actually in the middle of kind of on our road trip so he was helping us a lot uh, with the logistics taking care of the meat and and everything so huge thanks for fernando for helping us logistic wise and it was a pity to that he was not able to to make it there and regarding the pyrenees it's a tough air tough area to hunt not because of the terrain i mean it's uh, the pyrenees it's mountains but it's not the very steep alpine country that the the people know the Pyrenees for, but uh, it's tough because of the terrain. It's very thick forest, so it's really hard to uh, stock the game. And that time of the year, the ground is very dry and it's really hard to see them. And it's also an area that the quality isn't great. Like we have been hunting for a few seasons there and the quality of the stacks are not anything comparable with the other areas that we have been hunting but still the purpose of that trip was to hunt with with our friends and what we found when we arrived there was a super quiet valley like last year there were there were stacks roaring all over and still we had a really tough hunt and i wasn't able to shoot one arturo wasn't able to shoot his stack either so it was really tough conditions but this year when we arrived and we couldn't hear any single roar at night, I was like, we are going to be in trouble. And we learned several things during this chapter, several lessons that I wanted to, to share with you guys. And the first of, of all, it's never lay in bed. Like no matter how tired you are, you are never going to kill a stack from your bed. So we arrived, I think, after three hunts we arrived there at three or one in the morning and we end up being uh, in, in inside the tents by three in the after at night or in the morning so despite though no one wanted to really wake up we woke up with only three or four hours of sleep destroy you could tell on, tell on our faces but that made made the whole difference and we were able to har to harvest the biggest stack that i have ever seen in that area it's true that i don't know if it was because i was pretty sleepy or because it was the first hour of the first morning of 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 the hunt in that place that it also it's another lesson it's just like whenever you get a good opportunity take it and no matter if it's the first day if it's an opportunity that you will shoot on the last day of the hunt take it because it may be the only opportunity that you get and it was super early on the hunt and it's still uh, we took the opportunity i had my doubts and i told the slots media guys it's like <laughs> i'm not sure if i want to shoot this stag it's very early and this and that and they both look at me and it's like are you freaking kidding i mean we have the stag on frame uh, there is no single roars uh, we have it everything we are filming and it's a great stag 
you need to shoot it. And thanks God they they t- said that because uh, I could have probably uh, wasted the opportunity that we were going to get on that trip. And we were able to shoot that stack 300 meters. The shot was beautiful. And the I don't know if it was because of the weather conditions or the light or something, but you could really see the bullet fly into the stack. And it's uh, it turned out to work perfectly. It's true that the pack out was a nightmare. Another lesson that we learned is that you have to be prepared always that you may be successful. I wasn't expecting to hunt on that first morning a stack, so I didn't brought the meat bags. I didn't brought any anything. Uh, these guy, uh, these lodge media guys, didn't have room on their pack, so we were definitely not expecting to to shoot a stack, and that made it a complete nightmare. The boots that we were wearing were super light to don't make noise on such a dry ground. So we also didn't know another lesson. Learn your area because we thought that there was a road down below us and we lost a lot of altitude thinking that we're going to get straight to a road and then we were able to drive the car there. But it turned out that the road down there wasn't connected to the one we had the car. So there was no way to, to get there and we end up doing a painful one hour or two hour pack out of that stack that that no one by the way came help so that's that's another lesson pick your friends no and choose your enemies what else about the trip uh, on the afternoon uh, instead of just moving to the next location since our was our main objective of that trip was to share time with our friends we decided to stay the afternoon kind of relax um, uh, go with Arturo to help him out. Jack was by that time pretty sick. He had been with some some kind of cold or something during the whole trip, and you may hear him coughing a bunch of times during the during the series. And and he decided to to rest on camp while we went to help Arturo. And the afternoon was uh, it. We, we didn't record it properly, but Arturo almost killed us that afternoon. I mean, my car alarm went off twice because it turns out that the Toyotas have like a security alarm that if, if they detect any movement on inside the car, it just goes off. And with the flies that we had inside the car because of all the blood that probably was inside the car, the alarm was started, kept going off. Uh, very easily until the point that we it sounded twice and just ruined the whole afternoon and I had to leave the car unlocked so it, it didn't sound again and when we were half an hour before like the best time of the day that's when Jack decided because he already rested for a few hours in camp and he was bored and he decided to fly the drone exactly on top of us so the look I got from Arturo when I hear the drone and I look up and it's like, no. And it was already pretty dark. So you could actually see the lights of the drone because maybe if not, Arturo would not have noticed that it was the drone. But as soon as I saw it, like, don't look up, Arturo. Freaking Jack is flying the drone right above us. So terrible afternoon. That being said, we also decided to stay one extra day to share camp with everyone, enjoy the food and enjoy the laughs and the company. And... The next day we found a nice stack uh, for Arturo. I told him or not to shoot. He's a great shot, by the way, but the stack was like 500 or 600 meters away. And I was like, we are not shooting a stack that far. We need to get close. And if we cannot shoot it in the morning, we'll make a plan for the afternoon. We made a plan for the afternoon, stay lower on the area, kind of uh, controlling the whole valley the stack was on. And and we were able to call that stack in. Important thing about calling, and I think that video it's a great example on, on how to call. It's very important to be patient and to work the animals so they start replying. It's not a matter of just getting inside your like getting inside the hunting area and start like roaring right away like crazy. Uh, you have to feel like you are a stack and to do things that a stack will do. So uh, we arrived to the spot, we waited for an hour without a single roar, because sometimes when you get in on an area, that's when you're going to make noise. 
is animals are gonna hear you coming inside the area and they're gonna be super careful to see uh, what's going on. But after an hour, the whole valley was super relaxed and I started calling. And you start calling on a relaxed way, like warming up like a stack. The stack, you have to think that the stack has been bedded for three or four hours or whatever and that he starts waking up. So it's like uh, something smooth, warming up. Then uh, finally we got a reply in the valley from the, the stack that we wanted to shoot. After he replies, you reply, uh, but you don't reply super aggressive right away. A normal stack, it will like do like a contact reply, reply to that first roar of the stack. And as soon as I could tell that the stack was warming up, that's when you increase the intensity of the roar and also the frequency. Uh, that you are roaring so it got more intense the stack started to get angry i could tell that he was coming and we were, it was super exciting we roared to that stack for over an hour until it finally showed up it looked uh, it came out to kind of control the whole valley and see who was inside his territory and that's when arturo was able to to make a, a perfect shot and one of the things i love about this episode is that it truly shows that hunting is not just shooting or pulling the trigger or shooting the animal. Uh, we were several people there and the excitement I got uh, for being part of that, for being able to call that stack for a good friend of mine, it, I, it didn't really matter that I shot the stack or Arturo shot it. For me, it was the same. We all hunted the stack and we were able to enjoy it. And I think that's what hunting is really about and that's uh, pretty awesome that we were able to capture th that on video and that you guys were able to also enjoy it and to feel identified on the success of, of a friend. And it was super lucky, two-year achievement. Last year, neither of us uh, got a chance to shoot a stack and we in two days we connected on two great stacks and I was super stoked. We went to camp, eat, and start driving that night straight to to Leon, which is going to be the next chapter, chapter 5, which can't wait to share it because it's pretty awesome. And that being said, that's the, the things I wanted to share about the behind the scenes or whatever that I wanted to share with you guys about chapter 4 in the Pyrenees with my friends. And we had some questions to to answer. So... so what for GTC? What's your opinion on thermal shooting for hunting and for recovering? So thermal, the use of thermal. So I think in the US it's completely legal, but in, in Europe they are gaining and they are getting more and more popular. I think as with every all the technology, um, it's good if you use it for the right purpose, but it can be bad if you use it for the wrong one. I think it's a great tool to control animals, to check uh, like populations and recover game and doing analysis. But I think for hunting, you don't really, you don't really need it. And if you use it wrong, it can provide a huge advantage uh, towards the animal and it can unbalance what we, uh, what we are trying to do, which is having a equal a challenge or looking for the challenge with those stacks. So, Alex Alda, what's the altitude of the hunting area in the Pyrenees? Mm, I'm not sure. I think it was like 1,500. So it's the Pyrenees, but it's the base part of the Pyrenees. Also, quad for GTC, family recipes? So recipes uh, for stacks, for cooking... I like to keep it simple. I think it's super important how you take care of the meat uh, until the moment that you cook it. That way it, it will not have that gamey flavor. So I like to uh, take good care of the meat, let it cool down, freeze it, uh, let it defreeze slowly on the on the fridge or the freezer. I always mix that fridge. both words. No, freezer is congelado. Yeah, so... Uh, and, and I like to keep it simple and, and barbecue it or fry it uh, hot on the outside, but keep it uh, pretty red on the inside. And, but that's a good, good idea to do a behind the scenes probably with a few recipes. 
Can you post the words for your song, of your song? So the words for Butardol, the song I sing with my dad, uh, I, I'll try to put them on, on a post or probably on the comments of, on the description of this video, video, so you can see it below. But I don't even really know how to spell the, the song because any of the words make any meaning. So can any, we, any sense. Any sense. So I, I would love to hear someone that says like, hey, that reminds me of something because I'm completely lost and we can figure out what the song means. So Michael Scalette. Which type of bullet do you use for the stack? So we were shooting uh, on on this episode. We shot the 308 Winchester, and the cartridge that we were shooting was the Hornady Precision Hunter. Uh, the bullet was the ELDX, and I think it's 147 grains. But I'm not sure if that's the one of the 270 Winchester or the one of the 308. But I'll, I'll put it on the comments. I, I'm terrible with names. I'm terrible with technical data. I don't have good memory. Um, Jacobo Trapote, digital camera to film at long range. In this episode, and I think except the one on, I think the one on Gredos uh, that we used an icon and on this episode the shot was filmed with the Sony 7 Alpha and the lens was a 400 mil with uh, millimeters with a Doppler so I think it was turned out to be an 800 and the quality of that shot I mean on, on my shot was amazing you could even tell the bullet that was flying but and on the one with Arturo the light was a bit short for for like a great quality, but it's a good option for rifle hunts. H O C H, which is online right now. Do you practice Hello. the calling at home? I do practice the calling, but not at home because you can your family can drive crazy. I think a great ta a great place to practice the calling is while driving. Uh, no one or inside the car, no one hears you, and and I think it's a. I do have a friend that once the police officer knock on, on the window is like, what the hell are you doing? Can you explain me what the hell are you doing inside the car? But I think it's a great place to to practice. Piti Gonzalez, is it possible to book hunts on any of the areas you hunted or is it all private grounds from the, from your friends? So a bit, a mix of everything. So the, there are some hunts that are commercial that anyone could uh, contact the outfitters. And we typically mention the, on the description on the videos, we typically mention if there was an outfitter who was it. So you can contact them if interested. But for example, the one on the Pyrenees, uh, it was not through an outfitter. It was with some friends. And the one in Palencia, which is going to be chapter six, was with some friends. But Chapter 1, Acorland, where we both hunted, you can contact with Acorland Hunts. Chapter 2 and 3, Gredos and Zamora, it was through Caza Planeta, you can contact them. And chapter eh, chapter 5, which is in Leon, which is the one that we are releasing in a little bit, eh, it was with eh, through Joaquin Badillo, which you also can contact them. He's asking if you could ever do a video on how to... Use the different calls and um, the different calls. Yeah, so regarding the calling, I think we have a behind the scenes video coming up in chapter in six that we will share some of the ideas of how I see the calling and what type of techniques and, and thoughts I have on those. So hopefully you will enjoy that one. JC, what caliber did you use, both Arturo and you? Okay. So I was using a 308 and Arturo was using a 300 Winchester Mac and that's why you can see that my stack ran 50 meters and you could see Arturo that no matter you where he hit the stack how it dropped on the spot so <laughs> that's the difference between calibers Can you talk a bit Nicolas Rodriguez Gracian is that a sour 404 which model did you use you know, it was a Sauer 101 XTC, so it's a new model that they came out also out of out of carbon. David Peter, what are your boots? Been looking for a pair of light stocking boots. 
So the boots are called, I think I have the link on on the first episode, are from Bebo Barefoot. So it's a company out of the UK, I think, that they make like barefoot less type of boots and they are super flat and super nice and they are not noisy at all, but they are terrible for packing out game. Cadestani says, what do you think about the mono rifle for this type of hunting? I think it's, I, I like to have a quick second shot uh, ready because they are big animals. The weight is not such a big of an issue for me. I think uh, mono shot rifles are great because they are super light. But I like to have a second bullet and if I, by any chance, I make a bad shot to be able to follow up with a second shot as quick as possible and and and, and get the animal down as quick as possible. Okay. I can't find the, the question, but someone someone asked again how to participate on the giveaways. So how to participate on the giveaways? You have to comment on the chapter that we are doing the giveaway on a uh, comment on the YouTube videos. So it's pretty easy. We appreciate everyone that it's liking, especially everyone that it's sharing the videos on Instagram, on social media and all that. It helps us a lot and we love you guys for that. But if to participate, you only have to comment. H H O C H. If you, I don't know how to say, centras el arma in 400 meters of altitude. How can you check the trajectory? I don't know if that's, I'm translating. Yeah, I'm, I'm to, trying. So we put the zero of the rifle at 100, and since the scope that we are using have a ballistic tower. Uh, with the program that that Swarovski has and the app, you can put the altitude that you are going to be hunting and adapt the clicks and the turret to that altitude and to that bullet. To be more precise, it's great if you can measure the speed of the bullet, the real speed, not the one that it says on the box, because sometimes there is a big difference. But if you measure the speed and of the bullet and and you measure the altitude, the temperature and all that, and you put all those in the app, it's pretty precise and we have been, it has worked for us really well, at least for the distances that we shoot that is 300, 350. Okay, so if you haven't figured out how to participate on the giveaway, <laughs> you need to listen to the live Q&A and follow us because we, we say it a lot of times, but let's do the giveaway of this episode. In this episode, between all the comments that we have received on YouTube, we are giving away a sour knife. It's a, a one of the models that it has a, a stack handle. So beautiful knife, super sharp. We have been, it didn't arrive on time for the trip, but we have been able to, to use it at the end of the season. And between all the comments that we got, we picked out of the three videos we Pick three winners out of the three videos that we released, which was chapter day 11, day 12. And the behind the scenes also counts for the giveaway, which was sharpening a knife. So we picked three winners from those videos. From each are, video. From each video, which are the finalists. And we're going to pick a final, a final winner. I don't know if it's focused on the. Um, okay. So the finalist. I don't know if, if anyone is on the live video. Yes, yeah, so, someone is. Someone is. Jose Ignacio Villarrabid, Hunting Diary, Pablo Cuevas, Nano26, Rafa González, Tim Gruber, Kieran, Nacho Navarro, and Moritz Meyer. So I'm not sure if any of those is connected right now. K Kieran is connected. Kieran, so Kieran. Yeah. He's the only one connected. You I think so. You Imagine it if you win. <laughs> I am. Aquí estoy. I, there is another one. Who else oh. is connected? Chete. I don't know who is Chete. What's your name on the list? ¿Cuál es tu nombre? So Chete. We have two of the finalists connected to the live. Nacho Navarro. Nacho Navarro and so Kieran. So hopefully you guys win. You deserve. It's between the for two For the again. loyalty. But let's see. We are going to pick a winner and we are going to pick a... A backup winner in case we are not able to reach the, the winner or the winner doesn't want to, to win a knife. But the winner <laughs> is... I saw it. <laughs> oh, 
We have a winner that is actually connected. Connected, on the live video. Nacho. Nacho Navarro, you are the winner of the knife. You are live also on Instagram, so I'm glad that you got lucky. No need to. Sorry, Kieran. To pick Next a, time. a backup, but congratulations. Oh, all the hearts are coming, like. Yeah, so congratulations, and we're going to announce the next uh, giveaway. The next giveaway is going to be by by Svarovsky, which was one of the companies that was has been supporting the project, that we can be thankful enough. And these are the companies that make these projects possible. And we are going to give away three packages. Uh, the packages are going to include uh aluminum bottle water which is actually pretty cool uh Svarovsky hat Svarovsky neck gator and two packages two two winners are going to get a backpack from Svarovsky and the other winner is going to get an Svarovsky foldable knife which is here so three winners, each winner is going to get a package that is going to be either a knife or a backpack. The knife, by the way, it's a multi, multi accessory knife. You can put, you have like Allen keys and screwdriver and everything. I would love to show you how it's used, but I'm not, I haven't <laughs> played with it before. So I don't want to cut myself, but yeah, it has a multi tool. You can add here some of the wrenches. And it's a pretty cool uh, multi-tool knife. So three winners. Each winner is going to... Two winners are going to have a backpack. The other one is going to have the, the knife. And all of them are going to have a hat, a neck gator, and a water bottle. That it's also... Actually, it's a pretty cool water bottle. So That Pedro wants it. <laughs> yeah, I want, I, I want some of that stuff. But we are going to give everything away. Next time, I will ask Svaroski instead of sending three packages to send four. And for that, remember, we are releasing at 7. In 20 minutes, we are releasing episode or day... I'm lost on days. I think it's day 13, which is chapter 5, which is going to take place on, on Leon. Watch it. Uh, I'm shooting the biggest stack I have ever seen and the biggest stack I have ever shot. And it's pretty cool. Pretty cool episode pretty cool chapter and in order to win that you only have to comment those videos and we will highly appreciate if you like what we are doing subscribe to our youtube channel a lot of content coming thumbs up comment like and share the content because that means the world to us and we are glad you are enjoying stack culture so thanks for joining another live q a and uh, see you guys in two weeks or in, I will put it on the description. I'm not sure when is the <laughs> next live Q&A, but it will at the end of the chapter of Leon. So thanks everyone for, for joining and we highly appreciate your, your support.